Today I thought we would look at the article Realism in Fantasy RPG Combat by John Clements. This is an older article. I remember it vaguely from years ago when I was getting into the Riddle of Steel role-playing game. It was one of the first really kind of independent RPGs I remember getting. And I had this memory of reading some type of article about uh, RPG combat by John Clements. So as I have been thinking about trying to write my own rules, I wanted to go back and review it and actually see what he said. I finally found the article on the Wayback Machine, so I thought we would go over it and have a discussion. I remember at the time that the Riddle of Steel was promoted for having a very realistic combat system and having the endorsement of the Arma, and you can see down here, it says a lot of people ask what the Arma's endorsement is, or rather where it comes from. The following article was written by John Clements, Arma director, after a conversation he and I recently had about RPG combat. This outlines the way that he would do it. The, the Riddle of Steel endorsement comes primarily from two things. Riddle of Steel does all the things that are listed below, though not necessarily in the way that he describes them, and does them in a format that doesn't sacrifice playability. So let's see what John Clements had to say on fantasy RPG combat. I'll uh, go over the article, but then I want to provide my own commentary as well as we go. Realism in Fantasy Role-Playing Game Combat by John Clements as a practitioner and researcher of medieval and renaissance combat skills for over two decades, I'm frequently asked about how real historical fighting relates to what's found in fantasy role-playing games. I'm generally asked if a game cannot have considerable realism in its combat system and still be fun. Having been a sometimes avid gamer since in my early teens, my reaction is usually surprising to those who ask. I will typically sigh, then say the two are incompatible and should not be mixed. My opinion is that RPGs are about having fun, and real combat is about a brutal violence and survival. Yet those times which I have been pressed to offer my views, I have also answered that by paying attention to only a few simple ideas, gamers can indeed incorporate considerable realism into their combat without sacrificing a smooth-flowing, playable adventure. The result can then be even more exciting. The problem as I see it is of realism versus playability. In my opinion, an RPG always has to be an abstract combat system. You don't want to be realistic. Real fighting consists of far too many factors, physical, psychological, environmental, tactical, etc., for it to be completely or realistically recreated in a game. There are a nearly infinite number of permutations and possible outcomes. Attempting to include all these elements would result in a clunky simulation, not a quick and fun representation, which is what you want in a game. Trying to incorporate all of the aspects of what happens in actual combat in a game would end up with a system too cumbersome to the serve players. That's probably too cumbersome to serve players, not to mention still being open to considerable debate and disagreement as to what really was historically valid and martially effective anyway. So I offer here for gamers some consideration on how realism and RPG combat can be approached based on my long experience with historical arms and armor and teaching medieval and renaissance fencing. I consider the following five simple points key to those elements of historical fighting, which can be legitimately worked into a good game in order to enrich its combat system. Okay, so let's look at these five points points and then see what we think about them. 1. Armor Class Armor has virtually nothing to do with whether or not you can be hit. What armor does is protect you from injury. After all, when being attacked, armor is either in the way of a blow or isn't, and once struck, either absorbs to flex some, none, or all of the damage. Thus, whether soft or hard, flexible or rigid, it absorbs or more accurately deflects blows. Yes, heavier plate armor can somewhat affect your agility and speed as a target compared to, say, being naked, but the encumbrance is far less than commonly believed. In this point, he certainly does seem to be arguing for armor as damage reduction, which is a classic GURPS thing. And of course, I've been a fan of GURPS for many years. Though there is at least one armor as damage reduction variant I know for Dungeons and Dragons because I remember it was in the uh, third ed Unearthed Arcana book. So it's something that can be imported over to Dungeons and Dragons. Of course, Dungeons and Dragons being renowned for an armor class system, which makes you more difficult to hit. And traditionally, not considering any type of damage reduction. Of course, this is where you can get into a tremendous amount of argument and back and forth on what exactly it is that armor class represents, just like you can get into a conversation about what hit points represent, especially since Dungeons & Dragons also uses dice to determine damage after you've determined whether or not you're going to be hit or not. So even if you exceed somebody's armor class but then roll low in damage, it could mean that yes, the armor did absorb some of the damage but not all of it. I remember at times in Advanced Dungeons & Dragons trying to determine whether or not the character was actually hit and the armor prevented them from taking damage or if it was missed entirely. And I think we did that by checking to see if the attack roll would have hit an unarmored target. And if it would have, then we ruled that the target was in fact physically struck when that mattered. 
in some of the material that I've been going back and forth on, I'll probably be bringing out later, I have been thinking a lot about, you know, what's the best way to handle this from the game perspective. Like I said, generally speaking, I do like having armor as damage reduction. I tend in that direction. But when you're looking at things mathematically from the dice rolling perspective, and also from the perspective of speed of combat and gameplay, sometimes just armor class systems do have uh, advantages in those areas. So we will see. We'll take a look at his next subject, which is weapon defense, in the next video.